Hi guys, I'm Darren, and in this video, we're going to get flappy with iNav. That's right, we're getting flappy. And no, this video is not just going to cover flaps. We're going to be looking at flapperons, spoilerons, flaps, crow braking, which is also known as butterfly braking, and also full span ailerons just for fun. So carry on with this video. And of course, I'll put chapters in the description so you can jump where you want. Uh, but yeah, we're going to cover everything that we can about flaps and also the full span because yeah, crow and stuff like that is usually used on a glider where they may be useful too. So some of you may have noticed I'm wearing a different t-shirt to the intro. That's because this is the second time I'm recording this video. In the first recording, I sort of asked whether you guys would like uh, an article to go along with a video. And I sort of started writing it anyway, because I figured it's a topic with lots of information in it. So it'd be nice to have it as an article so it can be read. But while writing the article, I actually not only found a better order to do the, these uh, functions in, but also came up with some other tips which I wanted to include in the video. So I thought, nah, sod it, let's just record the whole thing again. Well, 90% of it again. What I'm going to do now is jump back to the original recording so we can look at what actually happens in iNav with the options available at the moment. And then we'll come back to now and we'll look at the actual setting up of our sort of custom flap setting. So I've noticed a couple of questions recently in the iNav Fixering group about how to get flaps working with iNav. There's a flaps option in iNav, but it doesn't seem to work the way people expect it to. So what is it doing and do we really want to use it? Let's have a look in iNav. Right, so I've got my flight controller set up just over here and I'm just going to connect to iNav. So if we head into the mixer, we can see what we're talking about. So here we have this has flaps option. And what that basically does is enables a flaps box here so that you can assign a switch to it. So coming back to the mixer page, what we've got here is just a straight load and apply of the aeroplane mixer. I've not got flaps turned on, but you'll see down here it's automatically added flaps to the default mixer, regardless if the button's checked or not. So all this button does is enable the mode. But you'll notice they're on the same channels as the ailerons. So it's not actually flaps that it's adding, it's flapperons. So that's basically allowing you to have flapperons on or off on your plane. So what I'm gonna do is enable that, save and reboot, and we'll stick it on a switch so we can see what happens. So if we now go into modes, we should find somewhere we have flapper on. So what I'm going to do is I've already set up channel 10 on a switch. So in the middle it's on, everywhere else it's off. So now let's head over to the workbench to see what happens. So I've got my little plane here. And you can see if I put the switch to the middle position, all it does is put both ailerons down a touch. We still have plenty of control of the ailerons and that's it. If I lift the model up, so that's it off, that's it on. So it just puts both ailerons down a very small amount. And you know, when you see how much throws on that, the ailerons there, that is hardly any flapper on at all. So it, it works but it doesn't really give you a lot at all. Okay, so now we've looked at how iNav does it. And of course, this can be improved. We can customize the amount of deflection that our flaps, whatever, is using. And we can also uh, have it on a switch so we could actually have two stages of flaps instead of just on or off. Or we can put it on a slider so we can actually have variable flaps or crow or flap runs, whatever. So uh, we're going to look at all those things. What I will do is include a couple of more details for testing in the first uh, example, which is flapperons. So maybe it'll be worth watching the flapperons thing. And this sort of mimics the article too. 
So before we dive into the examples, I just wanted to share with you a couple of things that are sort of relevant to all of them. So uh, first of all, all of these are only for planes with a tail. They need the horizontal stabilization to keep everything working. And if you think about it, if you try to put flaperons on um, you know, a, a flying wing or something with just elevon control, all you're doing is adding elevator. So it doesn't work. So these are all just for planes with tails. There is going to be, for all the examples apart from the full span aileron, uh, a change made in OpenTX. Now, I know that everyone always says don't do any mixing in the transmitter, which I 100% agree with. We are basically changing the input here. We're not doing any mixing at all. The mixing side of it is still happening in iNav. So even though it seems like we're doing something we shouldn't be, that's not really the case at all. I could even go one step further and actually set the input in OpenTX and then in the mixer, just pass it straight through to iNav. But why do the work twice? Uh, so we're just going to do the change that we need to in the mixer. But yeah, all we're literally doing is saying the start and end point. The actual mixing part of it with the control surfaces is done in iNav. Okay, so as I mentioned, we need to make a change on our transmitter for this, but don't treat this as a mix. This is really just an input change. So what we're going to do is head into our model and we need to create a curve. So I'm just going to call this FLP for flaps. And this just needs to be a two point curve. And what I'm going to do is set it to zero. And I'm going to leave the other side as minus 100. Now, I found that this way seems to work the best for me. But if you find that your switch or your slider are working backwards to the way you would like, you, there's a couple of things you can try. You can either first change this one from minus 100 to plus 100 and see if that works well for you. Or you can switch them around that way. So you start at minus 100 and go to zero on this side. Again, you, you could also set that to 100 rather than minus 100. So by just going through a combination of those four curve layouts, you should find a way that the switch works perfectly for you. I'll cover more about the switch and how to test that in our flapper on example, just coming up in a sec. But this is basically the curve that I'll be using. So next, we're going to go backwards to our mixes. Again, like I mentioned in the intro, we could use this as an input, but it would just be work replication. So what I'm going to do is on channel 11, I'm going to get our flaps. And with all of these examples, we just need to apply our curve on here. And now the what you need to decide is how you want to activate your flaps. You can just use a switch. So that could be a two way switch or a three way switch. Doesn't really matter. Obviously, with a two way, they'll just be on or off with a three way. You'll have mid flaps as well as full flaps and off. Or the way I'm going to show in the example is using the slider. So just select your input. So either the slider, the switch, whatever you want to use, just select that and that's absolutely fine. The other thing that we'll be adding a little bit later on is just going to be a switch position on channel 10. Of course, you can choose whichever channels you wish, but um, I'm choosing these two channels because that's what I used in the first video, but also it's what's in the article. So it'll all just match up. But all I'm going to do on here, I'm going to call it flap mod. Or flap M. So I'm just going to set this to SE, which is this top shoulder switch. Now for the first, basically the first examples of how to set this up, I'm not going to be using this switch at all. But again, later in the video, I'll be showing how you can combine more than one option. So for example, I'll do a full house glider setup, which has full span ailerons, flaps and crow. So they'll all be working off of this switch. And of course you could 
just use that switch as an on off if you're not using full span ailerons it would be easier to have the if it's just a pure on off for flaps or crow or whatever just set it up in the transmitter and the way to do that would be to um, add another row onto here and we'll edit this so the source you would set to max which we can get to here set the weight to zero percent which is our always going to be our off position and then you will need to set up a switch so i'll just use s a down so that is our off position and then in the actual slider one you would just again we'll just invert s a down so if s a is not down then our flaps will work so at the moment it's down it's doing nothing move it up and our flaps are working so if you're just using flaps flapperons crow or spoilerons but just want a simple on and off that's the easiest way to do it just do it in the transmitter but what i'm going to do is delete this and get rid of the switch so it's working all the time and I'll show you how to set up multiple modes and the off for uh, full span aerons at 9F. Okay, so that's all we need to do on our transmitters. So let's get on with the first example. So let's crack on. The first thing that we're going to look at is flapperons. Now, what are flapperons and how are they useful? So flapperons are used when you don't actually have the flap control surfaces on the inner part of the wing. You can use flaperons alongside regular flaps, but I'm not going to get into that. If you want to look at that, that's quite specialist. Um, so do your research, <laughs> but you can actually use them. But anyway, uh, what flaperons are doing in the most sense is where you don't have a flap control surface, but you want to add flaps to basically allow you to fly your plane slower for takeoff if you've got undercarriage, but mainly for landing if you haven't. So if you've got something that flies quite fast, but you'd rather slow it down a bit more for landing so maybe it doesn't skip all over the floor for example you can add a bit of flap and that will allow you to fly slower to get it down on the ground of course you want to turn the flaps off just before you touch down so that it doesn't damage any servos or anything like that but the flapperons work on the aileron control surfaces what you will tend to do is start with around 80 percent weight which is what we're going to use in the example which will still give you enough to have aileron control. What you would tend to do when you're landing, if you've got a tail, if you've got a rudder, you would use the rudder to actually point the nose and just use the ailerons to keep it flat. So that's what flapperons are for and how they're used. So how do we set them up in iNav? Let's go and have a look. Okay, so we're here in iNav. I've literally just done a load and apply. And you can see here, this is the standard mixer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to delete these two right here because, well, actually we could use them, but I just want to make sure that the servo numbers flow and that it's easy for us to see what's going on. So we're dealing with flapperons. So these are actually going to use the same surfaces as the ailerons. So we just need to take note of these two numbers here for our stabilized roll. So we'll add two new mixes. We're going to use the same channels as our stabilized roll, but we're going to use RC input 11, which if you remember from early in the video, I've set that up to the slider on the transmitter right here. But because we still want to have some control with our ailerons, we need to reduce the weight of these. So I'm going to set them both to 80. And now also because um, our ailerons are moving in opposite directions we actually need to make one of these negative so i'm just going to put it on the first one just as a test so you'll you'll find this with a few of these setups we need to do a few things to uh, just make sure everything's working correctly but what i'm going to do now is save and reboot so now we've saved and rebooted we can start checking over things so just before we go into it my setup i have an f405 wing all these servos are just powered off of that so it's it's a basically a nice straight forward inav setup 
we have ailerons, uh, elevator, and a rudder. So this is just a standard four-channel plane. So the first check that we're going to do is actually for our switch. Now, I'm doing this in the Flapperon example, but the same is true for any of the other examples apart from full-span ailerons. And what we want to do is make sure that that switch is in the off position and make sure that our surfaces are flat so the flaperons have not deployed if they have then you'll need to change the curve in here and just get it so that the flaperons aren't doing anything you've got a nice flat wing so now we can put our flaperons on full and i'll tilt the model up and you can see that both of our ailerons are now deflecting down slightly and if i apply the aileron you can still see we have plenty of movement so the way that we've done this has actually worked perfectly it's working absolutely fine but if you do find that your ailerons are going up instead of down all you need to do is move that negative down to there and that will work absolutely fine it'll get you your flapper on. the only other things that you need to be wary of is when you actually go to fly it you want to make sure that you still have enough aileron for control if you find that you don't obviously if you're on a slider it's nice and easy just back the slider off a little bit and you'll get more aileron control back if you're just using a switch what you'd need to do is reduce the uh, amount of weight here so 70 and 70 that would give you more control or more aileron throw compared to how much flapper on you're using so that is the basics of flapperons. So now that we have our flapperons example working, we can look at spoilerons. So what are spoilerons and what are they used for? Now, like flapperons, spoilerons are used when you don't have flap control surfaces. So you just have the two ailerons. And what spoilerons do is basically the opposite of flapperons. So whereas the flapperons will go down to generate lift, the spoilerons will put both ailerons up to kill the lift. So if you have something maybe like a Phoenix 1600 or a, a Duraflight Excalibur or something that has a really nice efficient glide, you might find that it just does not want to land. So what you can do if you don't have um, four control surfaces on your wings to use crow braking, what you can do is use spoilerons and they'll go up and the plane will drop. When I say drop, it's not going to go smash into the ground but it will kill the lift and get you down on the ground rather than just sort of going along and yeah, wanting to fly more so it's a really handy thing for that now i'm going to be really 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 lazy and say if you haven't watched the flapper on example yet watch the flapper on example because to create spoiler ons it's exactly the same all we need to do is change where that negative weight is so that both ailerons go up instead of down everything else is identical so what i'm going to do is we'll pop back to inav and you can see that i've already shifted the negative value because i was talking about what happens when if they're going the wrong way so if i save and reboot this example that was for flapperons and working correctly as flapperons once uh, the save and reboot has completed they will now be spoilerons so here we go let's tilt the plane up you can see at the moment nice flat control surfaces ailerons are normal and now we have spoilerons and again you still want to have uh, plenty of aileron movement and the same rules apply if you find that you have not enough aileron movement to keep the plane level uh, you can reduce that weight but likewise if you find that you've got plenty of movement you could actually increase these slightly. I, I wouldn't go too mad with increasing, um, just because you do want to make sure that you have got enough roll there to control the plane. But if you found it still didn't want to come down and you wanted a little bit more, you, you could increase these values. But the, probably the most I'd go to is 90. Um, with that, you should still just about have um, enough to control the roll. But 80 is a nice starting point. But likewise, if you're using it on a slider, you could put it at 90 and you've got complete control over how much uh, spoiler on you deploy by how much you move that slider. So it's it's not cut and dry. 
and there are plenty of options. So now we've finished with our examples for planes that have just got the two control surfaces, we're now moving on to a full house wing, which has one aileron, one flap per half of a wing. For flaps and crow, it's fine if the surfaces only go in one direction, but if you want to use full span ailerons, the flaps would of course need to go up as well as down physically. So you'll need to check that on your plane, but I thought I'd get that out there before we head into our first example, which is flaps. So what are flaps used for? Uh, again, it's the same as flapperons. They basically generate more lift from the wing. So if you've got undercarriage, it can allow you to take off in a shorter distance or it will allow you to land at a slower speed. That's the main uses for flaps. So how do we set this up in INA? So I've just done the load and apply again. So you can see we have our two flaps settings here, which we're just going to get rid of. And we're going to add two more mix of rules again. Now, like last time, these are both going to be RC channel 11 again. However, unlike last time, we're now going to continue these servo numbers on. So look for the highest number, add one and continue. So we're going six and seven. Now, both the weights are set up for 100%, but what we're going to do is potentially change that. Now, this depends on your wing and your control surface. If your flaps can only deflect downwards physically, I would reduce this weight to 10. Um, just so that it, when the flaps move, if they're going the wrong way, you're not going to kill your servos or at the very least stress them out. But also we need to add a negative value because one of them needs, well, they both need to go down. And chances are if they're set up with separate servos, it's because they don't both go in the same direction. So we're going to set this up here to minus 10 and 10 and let's save and reboot. Right, so we're back at our workbench and what I'll do is I'll go full screen here so we can get a better look. And you can see we have standard ailerons, elevator and rudder. Now, if I tilt it up, you can see our ailerons are there, but this is our flaps here. Now, this is in the off position and I know this because I've already set up flaperons, but if this is your first time setting up the flaps, you may not know if this is in the right position or not. Now, we've deliberately set these to 10% because if they went the wrong way, we don't want any damage, so we can safely move the surface. And you can see they're deflecting down, so we know that that is in the right position. So knowing that that's the neutral position, I know that this switch is in the correct place, and that is at the moment full flaps and we know that they're going in the correct di direction now if the off position of your switch is incorrect you'll need to change the curve as i mentioned at the start of the video and what we can do now is because we know that these are going in the correct direction we can increase the weight to 100 percent yeah we can set these to 100 but if you found that they were going in the wrong direction you just need to move the minus from here to here and that will get your flaps working absolutely fine. So there you go. It's quite straightforward. We've not done anything uh, out of the ordinary at the moment. So I'm waiting for that to reboot. And you can see now we have our full flap movement. So that is all good. That is flap set up. So it only seems natural to continue from flaps with crow braking. Now crow braking is basically applying an air brake to your wing so it will slow your plane down get you on the ground and it's, it really does help especially if you're slope soaring just to get landed and get on the ground so what crow does is as both flaps deflect downwards both ailerons will deflect upwards and that's what creates that that air brake so let's have a look in INAV now what I would say if you're doing the crow Go and watch the flaps example because we are starting from flaps because basically crow is half flaps and then another extra added to it so i'm going to reduce the weight down to 80 percent because where the crow part is acting on the ailerons we still need to have control so all we've done different from our flap setup 
is have the weight set to 80 rather than 100. Now we're going to add two more mixer rules. And these again, like the uh, flapper on and spoiler on examples, are working on our ailerons. So we need to find the servo numbers for stabilized roll. So we have servo 3 and servo 4. Now these both need to be on RC channel 11 again. Right, so the little trick is to try and get the negative value in the right place first time. Now you can see on my model here, the aileron and the flap servos, the rods are on the opposite sides. So what that should mean is that we can set the negative up on the same row, which I'll explain in a little bit, and it will work. If the rods were on the same side of the servos, you'd want to shift to the opposite row. Now, what I mean by the rows is in the mixer, we have for our stabilized roll three and four. Now, the first or lowest value is the left hand servo. The four, the higher value is the right hand servo. I've done exactly the same with the flaps. So six here is the left hand servo and seven here is the right hand servo. So we know three and six are on the same side of wing and four and seven are on the right side of or well, the same side of the wing so because my rods are opposite what that means is i should be able to put the negative value here and when these deflect down these will deflect up if of course the rods were on the same side of the servo so they would be coming down the right hand side of the servo on the left ring and the left hand side of the servo on the right wing then i would need to put the negative value here and not here so let's give that a try and see if it works of course uh these need to be 80 percent weight as well so let's set that up now and let's do a save and reboot and we're back so let's again get the arse in the air and there we go just plain ailerons so let's apply our crow and you can see that that little trick worked and our crow is working perfectly now you'll notice that we again still have aileron control on the crow which is why we set that up to 80 percent and of course you can feather with a slider to get just amount of crow to to get the, the plane down and i've actually seen guys on the slope who will actually play with the crow so they can get the thing down right at their feet it's the amount of precision you can get with crow is great so there we go that is crow one thing i probably should say which sort of goes without saying if they're both going down instead of up just move that negative to here and then it will all work fine now that's actually crow finished <laughs> so the final thing that we're going to look at is full span ailerons and what they do is give extra rotational response to the model so instead of just having the ailerons on the tip working the flap control surfaces will act as ailerons too so you get a bit more roll control of course it does add a bit more drag and what you would do is with the flaps start about two thirds of the weight of the actual outer ailerons and of course the more control surfaces you've got on a wing you can add even more of these like uh, i've seen wings with six control surfaces so we have the ailerons on the outside then we have two sets of surfaces where the flaps are you know there could be spoil one could be a spoiler one could be the flaps but they will have all six surfaces moving as ailerons and so that's start off with full weight two thirds weight and a third weight just so that the closer to the middle of the wing you get you get a, a sort of nice angle down so how do we set up full span ailerons in INAV? Okay, so we are back again at a brand new loaded and applied mixer. And you notice for all of these has flaps has been turned off. So let's go down and delete these two flaps. And what we're gonna do now is add two more mixer rules. Now this time we can keep them on stabilized roll. And what we need to do is just put them onto our flap servos now the weight of these of course we want to lower to 60 which is about two thirds weight and of course uh depending on how your servos are set up 
what you may need to do is add a negative to these or keep them positive now i have a feeling for mine i'm going to make, have to make them both negative to move the correct direction but if it's wrong we just remove the negative it's no harm no foul so let's have a test okay so do we have nicely working full span ailerons and the answer is yes we do so you can see what i mean about there's a an angle down so you got the full deflection on the outside and as you get closer to the middle of the wing it's less deflection and that's exactly what you want but that is full span ailerons of course if they did move the wrong way all you need to do is either get rid of the negative if you've added it or add the negative if you haven't got it and that of course is all stabilized still because we're using the stabilized roll so i'm going to put this back to minus because that was working with my setup but what if you don't want these all the time now i mentioned at the beginning the easiest way to disable flaperons flaps or crow is to just have a switch and do it on OpenTX so that it only ever sends out that zero but we can't do that with full span ailerons because it's just using the stabilized roll so what we're going to do is just pop into programming so all we're going to do in here is create a switch and we're going to use our rc channel 10 which we've set up here and that's it so if we save that oh sorry rc channel 10 save that and we can see when that switch is in that position our status is on so once that's saved we just pop back to the mixer and our uh, full span aileron we just set this up so it's only when logic condition zero is true so let's save and reboot and i'll turn that off so tilting the plane up with it off we've just got regular ailerons i'll switch it on we have our full span ailerons so there we go that's how you can set all these five functions up now one thing that i will go into now is what if you want to combine them so this is going to be the last part of the video guys i think it's gone on for a while already but this is going to be if you want to use a full house setup so we're going to have full span ailerons we're going to have flaps and we're going to have crow so the first thing we'll do is head into programming and we're going to create a few more uh logic conditions on channel 10 and these are just going to be mid and low so all these are is the switch positions so once that's saved you can see just switching that switch is changing where we're going so what we're going to do is we've already got our full span ailerons working from the last example we're going to stick it in the middle which is logic condition one and that's going to be our flaps so all we're doing is literally doing what we did on the previous examples so this is going to be flaps so six and seven we want rc channel 11 and one of these was minus 100 i can't actually remember what it was and we're going to set that up on logic condition one save and reboot so let me just test the flaps yep they're both going down so that's working exactly the right way around so and of course full span ailerons are still working put it in the middle we just have regular ailerons and flaps so with this setup if you don't want to use full span ailerons just put it in the flaps position or the crow position and switch the crow or flaps off with your slider it's just that simple you only really need the full span ailerons when you want to use them back to inav we know that this is our flaps working which is great so the last position i'll we'll switch that back and we're going to add four more rules now these are all going to be on logic condition two which is our final switch position and these are all going to be rc channel 11 of course now i'll set the bottom two up as our flap servos and these are going to be the same as these only 80 percent so we know that that is 80 that one's going to be minus 80 and these here are going to be three and four which are the aileron servos and these 
should also be 80 and minus 80 if i remember correctly so we'll save and reboot and again we'll have a look so here we go this is the final example on the bench and let's see how confident i am that it will work so full span ailerons switch in the middle position regular ailerons and flaps final position is it the right way around yes crow braking and of course aileron control so there you go guys 90 percent of this video was re-recorded just to make things better for you guys that's got to at least be worth a thumbs up for effort if nothing else and while you're there please remember to subscribe and hit the bell icon so this video can get out to more people and they can learn how to do this too so i hope this covers everything that you need to know if you have any questions uh please don't forget to leave a comment and i'll obviously reply uh one thing that i haven't mentioned in this which you you may be used to with flap setups that sort of thing is elevator compensation and if you're using this in a stabilized mode you really won't need it at all but if you uh, are flying in manual and want to use flaps or a crow with a little bit of elevator compensation you can just create another mixer rule just have a little bit of weight uh, on the elevator servo along with uh, the rc channel 11 for your slider so it's nice and simple and if you want me to cover that in a bit more detail and i'll probably put it in my document on the website then you know just again leave me a comment but anyway i'm going to wrap it up there because I've done this twice now <laughs> i want to get it edited and out there for you guys so yeah fly your models like you stole them see you on the next one bye bye